What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. In this video, I want to do a first look into Mojo, this new AI programming language. Okay, so here on my right, I have the notebooks that they made available for the um, for people that got access. This video is going to be a little bit like, I'm going to just, since I just got access and this is my actual first look into this, I just want to walk through what they made available, what we can do with Mojo. I want to just try to explore some differences with Python and I'm not a systems programming expert. And apparently in order to get the most out of Mojo, it would be nice to have some systems programming experience. But I think just, you know, looking through the language, looking through what it can do and just coding up some stuff, I think it's going to be interesting to see um, what the language can do. So let's get started. Uh, first things first, the first thing they made available is uh, they make available five notebooks. So this is the first one that you get access to. It's called Hello Mojo. And it's just, it looks like a simple, you know, it's a notebook in the Jupyter Lab. So it seems very Python-esque. And, and then they introduce Mojo. They talk about, okay, so you can just run Python code in Mojo. It's awesome. And then they make a comment that this playground that they made available for people that joined the waitlist is designed only for testing the Mojo language. And that the cloud environment is not always stable and performance varies. So it's not appropriate environment for performance benchmarking. And there's also this thing where it keeps restarting sometimes, which can sometimes be a little bit annoying. But I mean, this is the first look and this is the cloud-based thing that they made available. So obviously it's going to have some um, issues that they probably get to fix. And um, the thing that I really want to look into is the mat matrix multiplication notebook where we're going to be doing some, uh, we're going to be looking at some benchmarking, writing some code. Then I'm going to create another notebook to write some code that, uh, where we can use, you know, Mojo to do some simple matrix multiplication. Uh, but they make a comment that Python is not designed, nor does it excel for systems programming, but Mojo is. And this section describes how to perform basic systems programming. So essentially they make a comment here. Let me see. Yeah. So to be clear, this guide is not your traditional introduction to a programming language. The notebook assumes you're already familiar with Python and some systems programming concepts. So we can focus on what's special about Mojo. And I don't have a lot of experience with systems programming, but I do have a lot of experience with Python. So uh, I'm just going to try to walk through these notebooks the best I can, and we're going to see what happens, okay? Um, I, before we go into the notebooks, I want to just look, sh show you guys, like, what are the notebooks available, like, piece by piece. So this Hello Mojo, it starts with this comment about let and var declarations. So they go on saying, like, just like Python, you can assign values to a name and then create a function scope variable within a function, which provides a very dynamic and easy way to write code. But it creates a challenge for two reasons. So systems programmers often want to declare that a value uh, is immutable, and they want to get an error if they mistype a variable name in an assignment. To support this, Mojo supports let and var declarations, which introduce a new scoped runtime value. So let is immutable and var is mutable. These values use lexical scoping, which supports name shadowing. And then they give an example of what that means. So I can run this code. And then this code is assigning C to A. And then if C is different than B, then D is equal to B. And then print D. And then, you know, if you put in uh, two and three, there we go. We got to restart the notebook again. Okay, so I'm going to restart the notebook. Sorry, guys, but this is the reality of Mojo right now. Okay, so back to the example. If, you know, your function choose three, and then it will print out three because B, uh, in this case, C is different than B because C is equal to A. So if I do this, like three and three, and let's see, uh, let's see, something like four and four. Oh, four, four, and then it will not print anything. But if it's different, it will print the number. There we go. And they, they support types, specifiers, patterns, and late initialization. Struct types. Modern programming have the ability to build high-level and safe abstractions on top of low-level data layout controls. 
Short types are similar in many ways to classes, however, uh, our classes are extremely dynamic with dynamic dispatch, monkey dispatching, dynamically bound instance properties. Structs are static, bound at compile time, and are inline into their container instead of being implicitly indirect and reference counted. Here's a simple definition of a struct, and then they give a definition. Okay, so essentially, this notebook, Hello Mojo, goes through all the special features for Mojo from a systems programming perspective. So right now, I want to focus on the matrix multiplication uh, notebook because it's a little bit closer to what we're used to in terms of AI and you know uh, building neural networks because it starts discussing the idea of matrix multiplication. So it shows an equation where you know you're uh, essentially describing matrix multiplication, and then uh, what they do is first they show a Python implementation that can run like just as Mojo code. And then they show the Mojo improvement of that same Python implementation for matrix multiplication. And then they showcase how that makes the code much, much faster. And that's what we're going to be looking into. Uh, so the, here is the matrix multiplication example. So we're going to just run this. And then they will benchmark in gigaflops per second. So if I run this and then run the benchmark, let's see. So this is the time of running that I got. It was like 0 0.0023 gigaflops per second. Great. And now what they're going to do is you're going to import the Python implementation into the Mojo environment. So using Mojo is as simple as Python. First, let's include the modules from the Mojo std lib that we're going to use. So here they're importing, and this is very familiar to us, right? This looks very much like Python code from import, from import, etc. So this is awesome. And then we can copy and paste our Python code. Because Mojo is a superset of Python. What does that mean? It means that anything that works in Python should work in Mojo, right? Because Mojo has everything that Python has, more a bunch of features. So we can prove that by just doing the same, running the same thing in Mojo, but now as Mojo code, because before they were running as Python, as a Python environment. That's why you have this thing here on top. And now when you run it as actual Mojo code, this is what you get. And now they're going to benchmark the implementation as before using the 128 by 128 matrix. So this is what we're going to do. Okay, beautiful. And now we can run this benchmark of matrix multiplication untyped. And we got a speed up. Yeah, the, I did this a few times and it was like 13 times better than Python. Great. Now, it's important to note that this notebooks, these notebooks are not ideal for benchmarking. So these should not be considered numbers that we're benchmarking. We're just playing around with these numbers, okay? So they just run this and we got a big speed up, but now let's add some types to the Python implementation. So this program, while achieving better performance, is still not the best we can get from Mojo. If we tell Mojo the types of the inputs, it can optimize much of the code away and reduce dispatching costs. Unlike Python, which only uses types for type checking, Mojo exploits type information for performance optimizations as well. So to do that, let's define a matrix struct. The matrix struct contains a data pointer along with size fields, while the matrix struct can be parameterized on any data type. Here we set the data type to be F32 for conciseness. So they define this struct matrix, all right? And then it will have these attributes, data. It will be a data uh, D-type pointer of a certain type. Then these rows will contain integers. Columns will contain integers. Okay, great. That looks like a basic matrix. And now we're defining a init function and it's saying f and instead of the df that we're used to, but it's just defining the init function, defining the self rules. Rules will have integers inside, calls will have integers inside, etc. And now it's defining the attribute of this thing that we're, I'm used to thinking about this as a class, but in this case, this is a struct 
uh, which will contain the data pointer, etc. And then it will define some other stuff that we're not going to go into because honestly, I have no idea what's going on, to be completely honest. And then they're going to implement these two things, get item and set item in terms of load and store. For the naive implementation of MatMo, it does not make a difference, but we'll use this later in a more optimized, vectorized version of MatMo multiplication. Yeah, because they're going to do a few variations of this to showcase how that increases the speed of Python. And then with the above matrix type, we can copy and paste the Python implementation and just add typed annotations. Okay. Okay. How I say, oh, that's awesome. All right. So now I got to get a little bit. So now they created this struct matrix specifically so that they could run the same Python function in the same way, right? So it's, it's not like you have to change your Python code. The only thing changing here, right, was the fn. Copy, paste, graph, c rows equals up. So it's exactly the same function that was in here. So it's doing the same thing in the same way. The only thing that changed was this fn thing because before in Python, you used def to define a function, right? So that was the only thing that changed. And... Let's take a look. Now we're going to benchmark these implementations. So let's write a helper function that will do that for us. So they're going to define a function to do the benchmarking. And then, okay. So here in this benchmarking function, they're just saying, look, this function, this function is going to take in a function, which is going to be a function that will have three parameters, which will be of the struct matrix type. That's what I'm getting. And it won't return anything. So it won't return, it will return none. And then this is what that function is doing. All right. So here we're saying var C is equal to matrix MN. All right. And then var A, var B. Okay, cool, cool, cool. And then there's a function test the function. So here's testing the function. And now it is running a test. Prepare for me to start before you finish the benchmark. Okay, cool. All right. So there's some benchmarking going on. I'm not 100% sure of everything that's going on here, but okay. And now benchmarking shows significant speedups. We increase the size of the matrix to 512. This mojo is much faster than Python. And now when they run, there you go, 1,350 times faster than Python. And then adding type annotations gives it a huge improvement compared to the original untyped version. So if I understood this correctly, you have a 1,350 times speed up for a much bigger matrix. Increase the size. That's great. That's amazing. That's super fast. Okay, so now vectorizing the innermost loop. We can do better than the above implementation by using vector instructions. Okay. Rather than assuming a vector width, we query the width of the specified D-type using D-types and width. This makes our code portable as we transition to another hardware. Leverage SIMD instructions is as easy as doing this. Okay, so now they're doing vectorization of the innermost loop. Okay, so they got that function. They added this alias thing. We'll go back to these functions, guys, and just try to, you know, clear out what some of these expressions are. And they vectorize the innermost loop, which is this guy. So they're doing this thing for vectorization. Not sure what's going on here, but I'll believe you. I'll believe you guys from Mojo and Modular. And then they're doing, okay. Uh, they do the same with the, I mean, it didn't change that much. Handle remedial elements with scalars. Okay. So now they have this new vectorized version of the function that has this Python-esque feel to it. There's some changes. Okay. 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 And now we can benchmark this implementation. Note that many compilers can detect that even loops and perform optimizations on the Mojo allows them to be explicit and control what optimizations are applied. So I think one of the cool things about this is uh, you can go back and forth between Mojo and Python code. This is the thing that I think the power of this language is that if you write Python code, you're not going to be frustrated that you can't write Python code. 
but then you're going to be frustrated that your code is not very fast. So you have like a perfect incentive where you're not leaving Python uh, to learn these additional module features that allows your basic Python code to be much, much faster. And then here we go. We run the benchmark and 6,221 times speed up over Python. That's amazing. So vectorization is a common optimization and Mojo provides a higher order function that performs vectorization for you. Okay, cool. So now what we're going to be doing is we're going to be uh, looking at this next uh, implementation. So the vectorized function takes a vector width and a function which is parametric on the vector width and is going to be evaluated in a vectorized manner. Okay, I'm going to pretend that I understood everything that he said. And simplify the code by using the built-in vectorized function. Okay. And now there's only a slight difference in terms of performance between the two implementations. Okay. So now this was just a slightly different than this one, right? And still 6,000 times faster than Python. And now we're going to go into parallelization. So they're going to do, okay. So you want the best performance from modern processors. You have to use the multiple cores they have. With Mojo, it can be easily achieved with parallelized function. Let's modify our MatMul implementation and make it multi-thread. For simplicity, we only parallelize on the M dimension. Okay. So now we're doing, we're using this parallelized. What I like about Mojo is this. This feels very Python-esque. So it's not like something that, you know, you look at it and you're like, well, what is this? No, this is a package import from some module called functional. And you're like, okay. And now, okay, so this function takes in those three matrices. It has this decorator parameter. Uh, and then we're going to do a function called calculate row. And then another one called dot. Okay, okay. I, th I think I see what you mean. All right. And then you parallelize the entire thing. So they're just adding parallelization on top of the implementation that we just saw before. And when we run this, we can benchmark the parallel metal implementation. And when we run this, 22,131 times. <laughs> I mean, this is awesome. This is pretty cool. Uh, and then tiling met multiplication. Tiling is an optimization before for metal to increase cache locality. Okay, so now we're getting into the gritty to be like super duper fast okay i get it i think that just just the result that we just got is already really cool now if i run this let's see the speed up yeah like i mean guys this is insane i mean i gotta say that this feels very much like something a bit different this feels very much like we're here i started to see like you a little bit like standing and um, going a little bit away from Python, you know, but I mean, you still see the for loop that feels kind of natural, but some of the things, when I start looking at this, I'm like, okay. Yeah. There's some things they're a bit, um, like visually it, it will kind of give you a few of going away from Python, but like it's gradual and because it's gradual, you, you feel a certain proximity to the language in a sense, if that makes sense. Now we got to restart again. Uh, this is just, you know, the state of, this is just the, um, the um, uh, not prototype, but this is the first look, right? So this is the first, this is the cloud-based thing. So it's going to have some restarting issues and stuff. That's to be expected. Okay. So that was awesome. And now uh, they show a few other examples. Let's see, time spent, best candidate. F finally, using the find entry function, it was simply called the best candidate. And okay, so now let's just do run all. Run the selected cell. Okay, run, run selected cell, run all above, run all cells. Now we're just going to be running all the cells so that we can get to the final, like final results of this notebook. We were here searching for the tile factor. 
Let me see. Okay, okay. Tally my wall. Okay. So we got. Let's look at the numbers that we got. We. What will happen to the benchmarking? Oh, oh, we got an issue. Oh, we got an issue. Wait a minute. Benchmark or Apple Naive. Ah, uh, problem because there was. Okay. So we're going to run one by one. Let's see. We run here and then we were like this. So now I'm just going through it again because I had to restart the, the notebook. Okay. So now we're benchmarked. So it was like the first initial, like, 12 times is better than Python. And now when I run this again, we've got this matrix FN matrix issue. That's weird. Let's see if we can restart the kernel one more time. Let's see if I come here and I do restart the kernel. I'm running the functions again, guys, so that we can see the numbers that we got before. Okay, so now we got this. Okay, there we go. So that was a kernel issue. And now we restarted the kernel and now the kernel is working perfect. Yeah, so 1,413 times. And then we run the vectorization bits again. And let me see here. There we go. 7,000 status speed up, which is insane. And now 20, almost 23,000 times faster than Python. And now they're doing something called tiling, which I'm not even going to pretend I know what it means because, you know, let's just run the benchmark. Okay. So 22,000 times faster than Python. And now 23,000 times faster. At this point, I'm just, guys, I'm just going to run the benchmarks because I just want to look at these numbers and then I'm just, I would just want to try to see if we can do some magic with a simple version of these implementations to see if we can get some crazy numbers. And then they, okay, so Metmo evaluated number of candidates C, six for this thing, Metmo evaluated, would generate candidates for Metmo function, how to find the best style factor. Okay. So there are approaches that you can do even to select the best version of a function to make the code super duper faster. And overall, essentially you have, with Mojo, I feel like you have all the stuff that, I mean, uh, this thing is annoying. So you have all the stuff from Python that you would like, but then you have all these superpowers that you can choose to add to your code to make the code super duper fast.